We've had a string of interesting days in the market, to say the least, particularly today. We saw the NASDAQ and a lot of tech down big. The NASDAQ down 2.7% at one point and then close in the green. That is quite a high level of volatility to see that kind of move. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll remember we, we would see these moves in the price of oil and make some pretty clean indications that it meant the move where it ended was more likely where uh, the price of oil was going to go if it started down and then closed up. However, right now we're in a little bit more of a precarious position with regards to the highly volatile by nature tech stocks. If you remember on Friday's video, we talked about there being blood in the streets and there's some blood in one of our two buckets. We've got the energy bucket, which is doing very well, and we've got our long-term 10x growth bucket. That This one's experiencing pain, but we like this one so much and we're so heavily weighted in this one. But the two are actually providing a pretty good mix to start the year. I'm up 20% year to date, just about, for clients. Um, and today we saw some pain in this bucket, and then we saw some recovery. But unlike in the price of oil, where I'm happy to make a conclusion, my talk on this, let's go out to the blood in the streets, find those tech companies that we like, trading at a discount, does not necessarily have um, a high degree of certainty on some sort of bottom. Uh, I just listened to Mike Wilson of Morgan Stanley talk, I believe, CIO of Mar Morgan Stanley, and he brought up a good point, which uh, is something we need to consider, and that today's action, particularly in just naturally volatile tech stocks, does not necessarily indicate a bottom. Sure, maybe it's possible Maybe the NASDAQ touches its 200-day moving average, and that's it. There's a high degree of, 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 of possibility that that is the case. I'm not trying to discount that entirely, but I'm saying this volatility does, uh, does pose some questions. So I would be very selective here, um, and I don't think there's any reason not to be buying if a 10x name you like is one reasonably priced, you have to first do top to bottom analysis. What is the technological trend that's going to have a 10x impact on the world? What are the best companies in that field? Okay, I, I've, I've identified one. What's its price? How expensive is it? What's the market cap? Um, and then make your distinctions from there. And of course, we want it to be down from a 52 week high. That is, you know, the icing on the cake. If all of those stars align, I would say you can deploy capital there. But I would nibble on the way down. Okay. I'm not saying that we're definitely going down. I'm not saying also that we definitely have hit a bottom. I'm saying that. There's a high degree of uncertainty. And these tech stocks that aren't really producing earnings and aren't trading relative to, you know, relative to earnings at an appropriate valuation that you would, you know, be willing to accept the dividend for X amount of years, etc., are just too tender right now versus energy stocks which have very predictable cash flows and pay a dividend. Those stocks, I feel much happier to just go in and plow in when they're down, happy to plow. Over here, with rising rates and high volatility, I'm not happy to plow, okay? It's not like we didn't break through the 200-day moving average. It's not like we touched it and that was it. We went through it, okay? And I'm not saying it could, it could be the bottom. It could be the local bottom. It's possible. But there's obviously, as I've brought up, there's a lot of reasons to be uncertain. So if you're like me, and I'm just going to share with you me and my client's positioning, we have plenty of exposure here already, okay? We want to nibble a little bit, um, but we're not going all in. We're not saying, okay, this is now, we all got to, all of a sudden got to 
increase our weighting here by a substantial margin. What we're doing is we've got a bunch of stuff in bucket one, the energy bucket, the value bucket, and we've realized some gains on some shorter term options that are expiring now, whether we've had them for a long time or not, they are expiring now. And we're taking some of that cash and deploying some of it here and keeping a little bit in cash. That is what I would do. I'm not ready to you know, go all in here. I like this area, but it's not screaming yet. It's cheap. A lot of stocks I like are cheap, but it's not screaming. And there's still heightened volatility, rising interest rates, plenty of overcrowding, and uh, plenty of people that, given the wrong situation, will be forced to liquidate. I'm sure that there's a high amount of margin being used in this bucket. Maybe that has uh, brought us to this point and it is now washed out. But my assumption is that that situation, if you give it one or two more bad days, could get worse. Um, and we could be below the 200-day moving average. And then it's a bit, bit more scary of a situation. I don't think, while I'm saying this, I don't think... Um, a crazy type situation is going to happen. I don't think we're going to a new, you know, bubble type situation. Uh, the consumer's strong. Credit card spending has been down, which means they're not being strong in spending on lines of credit, even though it's picking up. Still well below pre pandemic levels, credit card uh, balances. So we're still a long ways from having to be concerned about a double whammy of rising rates and a slowing economy. We don't really have a slowing economy. I'm not concerned about the economy yet. What I'm concerned about is prices, valuations, and volatility. I think there are good stocks in this bucket, even at current prices, but there's a whole lot of crap, and that crap can sell. And they're all kind of lumped together, like ARC. They're all, all the stocks in ARC are trading the same. So there are names in ARC I like, but there are more I don't like even after this decline. So I say nibble. I would nibble. I have been nibbling. On the way down, anticipate further selling and just brace yourself and just embrace it and be happy you have this bucket that's a little more rock solid. This is the more rock solid, the energy, if you have banks, the banks, mining companies, this stuff. We really like this stuff. Iron Fist. I'm only selling my options that are expiring now, like January 21st-ish kind of range. And uh, everything else, I'm ready. I'm ready for a good year over there. So at least good foreseeable future. We'll see. <sighs> That's my yawn. That's the video for today. So until next time, peace out.